Right. One thing that I think is a bit weird is there's this, like, in CS score, it's almost like they're hearing shit on, like, the fucking, like, ghost stories around a campfire. Like, they know fuck all about Valorant Steel. They just, like, repeat things, like, Reddit style that they've heard. Yeah. So, obviously, they heard years ago at this period in 2020, like, oh, anyone from CS score can join and they just give you, like, a giant sack of money and they're like, oh, you've never played it. Please install it tomorrow. Right. The thing is, they were right in this period. In 2020, there were players joining who were like, I've actually either never played Valorant, or I only played like a few pogs, basically, but I'm a big player yeah. in CSGO, and I got the big offer from like a big org that wants like the talent drain, etc. Right, here's the thing. Yeah. Even though early on, that was never that great an approach anyway. Like, you notice a lot of those players didn't become the best players, and the real irony is it was actually players of the Chaos and Ghost level who were just progressing in their careers who became the really good Valorant players. Like, spoiler, yeah. it wasn't just getting the big names. But I will say, the actual role that does seem to make the most to recruit like that is IGL dude because IGLs and coaches yeah. are the guys who it's a, it's more about if they like the game they're going to apply themselves right like I, in my opinion that is the one role that I think even to this day sure they'd have a big catch up time it's the only one that makes sense to recruit like that like otherwise I would only recruit a player if he's already good at Valorant basically so like what do you think on this angle because I can get actually why they made big offers to people like you FNS etc like they, these are the players that makes the most logical sense to bring over to a, a similar type of game you know yeah, I think I think you there's it's a mix. It's like some players make sense to bring over and other players don't. And you have to really think about it on a case by case basis. You can't just make a blanket statement and be like it's all or none. You can't say that because it depends on work ethic. It depends on like has this guy like actually worked hard? Does this person actually think about the game? Does this guy actually bought with you? Does this guy actually enjoy it or is he just here for the money? All these questions kind of have to be asked and answered before you can kind of like make a case by case judgment on certain people. And I think when I like for my case um i actually ended up enjoying the game so that was a plus but it's also like you know you have these players in cs that cs was the same pretty much for five years and the only things that changed was like aug and creed came into meta then they went out of meta cz 75 was busted and then it wasn't busted tech nine became busted then it wasn't busted it was like then the ump was busted then it wasn't busted. It was like that's not really a meta shift like it's the same maps you're still playing them the exact same way there's nothing that has to change with it you don't have to think about like win conditions or anything you see you know best opera at the time is opping here you go the other site like there's not much really to think about there but in valorant a lot of it is changing you have a new agent how does that change how you're going to play the map um you know, uh, you can say like there's there's all these new maps. The maps themselves got changed a little bit. You know, Split had some modifications. Icebox had some modifications. So the maps themselves are getting a little bit of a change. And then you have like different. You know, this team's running Brimstone. That team's running um, Omen. Oh, Astro just came out. Wait, Viper just got buffed. And you have all these changes that are happening where players can't just like. I still see it today in 2022 at the end it's almost 2023 and people are playing some of the situations in valorant the same way that they did in 2020 when the game first came out like the first way people learn how to play like ascent and like where they throw the smokes it's like bro like that was resolved in 2020 people learn how to play this map since then and you guys are still stuck like the first week you played this game and i feel like those types of players that are still stuck in the ways from like the first week they played the game are the same types of players that played cs that were just stuck in their ways in cs that didn't know how to switch to valorant and understand that valorant is a different game there's a lot of crossover 5v5 tack fps plant the spike one or two sites or three and it's a lot of it plays the same way but then you have some CS players that are, instead of just like adapting to the game, they're like, why is this guy in this corner? Because he could literally kill you and press a button that makes him invulnerable. He could literally kill you and press a button that makes him dash that way across your screen. He could literally kill you and press a button and he's TP'd across the map. Like, this is why. You can't play it like it's one hundred, like one-to-one CS. You need to take the aspects that you've learned from CS. Ah, sorry, what was that? From CS in terms of like, you're, you have an advantage. How are you going to keep that advantage? You, uh, there's economy in the game. How are you going to maximize your economy? How are you going to make sure that you have enough guns for the next round? You still win more gun rounds than, than not. And you have to take new things like, well, there's ultimates too. How are we going to incorporate ultimate economy into the game? Well, we, you know, we could use... Um, if we save our guns here, we'll be able to get a, an ultimate orb next round, and we can use our ultis and actually win next round. But if we all die here and we're on eco and we have our ultis next round, then we just sit around another round where we don't get to use our ults and it's a wasted round. And so you have to think about the game different, but take a lot of what you've learned from CS. 
And then that's basic fundamentals. It's basic teamwork, basic comms. You don't just yell, B, 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 it's B, it's B, it's B, they're all B. You just say like 3B, they're doing an exec. Dart B, like you call specific, like what they're doing, you call it, you call it calmly, you call it concisely. And if it's urgent, flank behind you. Once loud, concise, urgent, done. Not like, flank, 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 flank. It's like, what the fuck are you saying? So those are the things that are going to transfer <clears throat> over. Those are the skills. And and for the players, yeah, you just have a shitload of players that are going to be stuck in their ways that don't know how to adapt. And then you're going to have a bunch of players that can adapt. And knowing who is who, you're not going to know until like you actually talk to their past teammates, um, interview them, sit down and like talk about like how they approach just anything in general. And even then, like people could just like pass interviews by just bullshitting their way through. Oh yeah, I work hard. I watch all sorts of odds. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or you know, be a pleb and don't.